Hi guys, uh, welcome to the live show. Um, it's been uh, a um, volatile week. Uh, crypto went down a lot. Uh, uh, sorry, no, uh, not crypto. Um, the stocks went down a lot. My stock portfolio went down by 20% or so. Uh, that's tankers, Corona stocks, airlines. And uh, for me also some tech stocks, Zillow and uh, RGG. Um, tankers especially took such a beating. And um, right now, uh, it's only 20% of my portfolio, but it used to be 35%. I lost half my investment on, uh, on tankers. And for example, a company like Scorpio Tankers, STNG, when I bought into it, it was market value was half of the book value. And book value in tankers, that's like the real value. Right? That's like the value of the ships, 100 ships or so. Uh, uh, and if you liquidate them, uh, that's your book value. Well, it was half. The, the camp company was valued maybe 1 billion and the book value was 2 billion. Today, after a, a couple of months investing in this or half a year now, uh, the book value is half a, uh, 500 million. So it dropped by two again. Uh, and the book value is the same or a little bit up. So now the company is valued at 25% of its book value, which I find extreme valuations and the revenues continue to go up for, a, for this company. They do well. Um, there's only one problem and that is that they do print lots of shares. Um, they started at 10 million shares. They are now at maybe 300 million shares or so. No, I don't know how much. But I, that's that's one problem. But um, and of course that's a big problem. But yeah, being able to uh, buy a company at such low valuation that um, I think uh, is extreme. Um, anyway, um, I did make a, a tweet that uh, I shouldn't. Uh, invest more in it because with all the information I have today, I would not invest in tankers again. Uh, I think it was a mistake of mine in timing, uh, especially uh, you should buy tankers when the shipping rates are low, not high. Uh, I learned why, because when shipping rates are high, that's usually priced into the market. Uh, they make lots of cash. And so the valuation of the stocks is relatively high. But at the time I thought, no, it's not relatively high. If it's half the back book value, you can't say, it's priced in, but it was because shipping rates have gone down since then and so have the valuations of the company. So um, yes, you should invest in tankers when shipping rates are low. And today they are actually not even low, they are average. So maybe you should wait another half year or a year before you invest in this. Anyway, I also will not sell it because, well, it's great value. It's really not the right way to invest, I believe, to unless fundamentals have changed, but they have not changed. It's just that my timing was wrong. But yeah, then to get out is risky, of course, because, yeah, I mean, it's never sure when something starts to pump. And uh, and of course, when you're out, you take the risk of miss, uh, missing out also. So I'm good with that. Uh, I won't add to the position, but I will also not uh, sell it. Uh, but but I did learn a lot about leverage and shorting because I've been I have a big short position in gold, about thirty five percent of my portfolio, and I started shorting bonds also about five percent, so that's forty percent total. And this week I wanted to buy more airlines, um, and I discovered that my I had maxed out my margin uh, in uh, with at my brokerage account. Uh, at, it was already at about two almost two point five leverage. Uh, and so, yeah, I wasn't fully aware of this, but yeah, when you borrow money from a broker, of course you, you add to your leverage. Let's say you have 1 million in stocks with your broker and then you, let's say, borrow half a million. Um, yeah, then, 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 you know, you have leverage, but in my case, I wasn't borrowing half, half a million from my broker. I was uh, shorting, for example, gold for half a million. And what happens then is that that's also 50% leverage. Uh, and so, um, and then suddenly, when you use that 50%, let's say the half million that you received from shorting gold and you invested in assets, then, um, well, your margin, maintenance margin and um, uh, initial margin also requirement also goes up. Eh? The more assets you buy, 
uh, the higher your um, margin requirement becomes. And then what happened this week is what that my stocks dropped a lot by 20%. So my 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 um, capital in my account, the value, the net asset value of my account, the uh, goes down suddenly, and that also uh, increases my leverage. So so that's how um um yeah I, I realized I really have to study this a little bit more, or, or I may get uh, margin calls and and I have to forcefully sell things. But what I can sell, of course, forcefully, is of course lowering my short on gold because. Well, short has been going down. Uh, gold has been going down. I have a small profit on it, very small. But I wouldn't want to do that. But worst case, I can do that, of course, uh, and that will lower my uh, margin requirement. But um, yeah, I, I do have to like I, I did some uh, uh, scenario testing, and I will get into deep trouble actually if the if we, for example, test the bottom uh, of the Corona crash. Then I'm uh, I'm gonna be uh, royally royally screwed uh, because um, my stocks will likely go down a lot more than my shorts on gold, and of course, especially short on bonds that will just go up. Uh, but but gold will likely drop less than 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 stocks, and so um, and and I and I won't be even even to able to buy more uh, assets. So I really have to study this much better uh, and to understand the dynamics much better. Um, uh, so that's one thing um, so yeah shoot your questions guys uh, interested to talk about anything uh, hi Budu hi Lubomir hi Birch hi Robin hi Anon VPN nice to see you guys hi Superficial Dom but um I think actually it's likely that we are not going to test the bottom of the Corona uh, crash. Uh, I think that um, yeah, some some countries have done again a second lockdown now in Europe. Um, but um, I think these are um, aftershocks, uh, and uh, just like with an earthquake, there are aftershocks, but they are not as bad at all as the initial earthquake. And um, I think that's what we're seeing here. Yeah, the stock market took. Actually, only a 5% correction, not that much. Um, but, um, but for example, bonds did not go up this week. Uh, yeah, initially a bit, but they are down actually not over the week. So stocks drop with 5%, but bonds usually should go up then in value and interest rates should go down again, but that hasn't happened. So... But but I think uh, if you look at, for example, the volatility index, uh, the VIX index is up a lot again. Um, and usually that's a sign of um, an extreme uh, and is likely to revert to the mean again. Huh? Um, so so I think it's more, much more likely that um, maybe we get another week of correction, but that this will end quite quickly, and we have a very strong rebound again, uh, and the markets continue to go higher in this climate of fear and, um, and um, yeah, fear. Huh? So I think that's most likely, and my thesis is all built on the long-term returns of stocks uh, and, and cycles, and, and I believe, yeah, we are, hey, there's a very strong, there's lots of evidence that we are very likely in a long-term stock bull market. And that means that if that's true, then yeah, we go sideways for a couple of years, every five years or so. We have a negative year in the stock market, but after that, it continues to go up. I think that's the most likely. And yeah, opportunity shift. Um, and patience is a virtue. And I don't control, like I fail also. Uh, having patience in crypto, I've I've learned to be much more patient. And for example, in the stock market, in the past few weeks, I've been suffering from FOMO, fear of missing out, and I've been lowering my cash a lot with the idea that that yeah, most money is missed on the sidelines, uh, lost on the sidelines, and I really have to invest that cash to be protected um, against inflation. Uh, the cash that I received from my shorts on gold and and bonds, but um, yeah, I've been buying on the way up 
for example, some airlines couldn't buy them, couldn't buy enough, and then they pump, and then I buy on the way up, and yeah, I get punished for that uh, only weeks after quite uh, heavily. Um, so yeah, patience is a virtue, and um, it's a challenge to uh, really master it. Uh, but if you have it, then sooner or later opportunities will strike that are um, to be embraced. And um, I wish I had a little bit more of that uh, when it comes to the stock market. Um, yeah, Lubomir says, we won't test the bottom mark, but we will see the S&P 500 below 3000 again. Uh, but not now, he says, after the elections in November. And then all after that all goes up. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Anon VPN says, get out of stocks and bonds. They are totally distorted. BTC is starting to break uh, correlation. More institutions are allocating, investing in Bitcoin uh, as they're getting wrecked in traditional finance. That's really not my view and not my hope also. I, I, I think that yeah, it's much more likely that uh, crypto performs poorly over the next year than the stock market. Um, yes, crypto is an early bull market, fully agree. Yes, crypto will likely go up. Uh, over time, but if you saw my last video on crypto, expect I it should be ending the year around not 400 billion where we are now, but maybe 250 billion, maybe 300 billion lower than we are. Uh, and, and by the end of next year, yeah, it should end. I don't know the number, maybe it's like 600 billion huh? from 300 to 600 billion. That's a doubling, that's true. But crypto is volatile and and, and it's likely to retest these uh, undervaluation levels uh, that I show on the Trollo chart. Uh, so I do think that 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 they, I, there are a lot of I, that the probability is is high for crypto to still offer uh, many I, or at least several opportunities to buy in uh, cheaper than where we are today. Um, and yeah. Um, I, I think it's very important to realize that Bitcoin has become a Ponzi huh? in the in the absolute definition of a Ponzi. Huh? Um, like people used to say when I invested five or eight years ago in Bitcoin that it's a Ponzi, but it was not. It was not a Ponzi because it had utility. Huh? But that's the only difference between a Ponzi and, and no Ponzi is it, does it have utility? Huh? Uh, because like... Um, So, so I was making the argument in, in my previous video about uh, crypto that the biggest problem with Bitcoin is that it does not go up in amount of transactions because it had maxed out. Huh? And um, um, there was a, a famous YouTuber who, who, uh, who, who replied to that, that, um, that uh, actually he, doesn't, he says that's right and that's not good, but... You should not look at the amount of transactions. What you should look out at is the hash rate. And if that continues to go up, that's a, a, an indicator that indeed adoption is going up. This is totally wrong because the hash rate is directly connected to the value of Bitcoin. So the higher the value becomes, the more money goes to because it's, it's paid with the inflation. Eh? You have new coins being issued by bitcoin and so this goes directly to the minus and the higher that value is the more hash power there will be and the lower that value is the lower the hash power will be so hash power just follows price it just follows valuation huh? so if you say like okay i'm going to invest in this because hash power is going up that's the same as saying i'm going to invest in it this because the price is going up and that's not that, that has no foundation. That's not a foundation. Uh, a foundation is because the amount of users is going up eh? or the amount of transactions is going up. Eh? Like that's, that's, that's a, a strong foundation, but not that the price is going up. That's a Ponzi. Eh? Investing in something because the price is going up while there is no, while it, while it is not used for anything is a Ponzi and it will collapse sooner or later because there are only so many idiots in the world that invest in something that goes up 
without offering any value to anyone else other than price appreciation. Huh? Um, yes, there are many people that can join. If you look at the history of Ponzi's, they can take on crazy, crazy forms huh? and crazy valuation can go a lot higher. But it will collapse if it's a Ponzi because there's no underlying value. And that's what we have in, in, in cryptocurrency. The market leader has turned has become a Ponzi. Huh? The people that invest, you, you talk about all oh, these institutions that invest, like this micro strategy guy that invested, I don't know, lots of money in Bitcoin. He, listen to what he says. He literally says that he does not want innovation in Bitcoin. He does not want anyone anybody to, to change anything, basically. Um, and uh, and that it is indeed a store of value like gold, uh, and that's why he invests in it. But like that's 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 as 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 idiotic as saying that Litecoin is the silver of cryptocurrency. It's equally idiot than saying Bitcoin is the gold is gold. Bitcoin is not gold. It's a cryptocurrency. Like gold is gold because. Uh, it, it's part of the uh, physical elements of planet Earth, and it's a precious metal that is very unique um, compared to the other pre precious metals. And because of its characteristics, it has succeeded in becoming the most precious, the most valuable. Huh? Um, uh, but cryptocurrencies, you have to compare with not precious metals, but with companies. Huh? Because you can, it's 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 a concept. It's it's a, it's a creation of the mind. Uh, it is not physical. It is code. Huh? And so you can like launch many cryptocurrencies, start many cryptocurrencies that will compete with each other. Huh? You can't do that with precious metals. You can't invent a new precious metal. Huh? Uh, and uh, um, yeah, the allegory uh, or the uh, the comparison does not hold. Uh, whatsoever. Uh, and so, yeah, it is a Ponzi. It's not gold, it's a Ponzi. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a big problem, of course. Eh? Uh, if your market leader uh, of your industry it has turned into a Ponzi that is not building out uh, the utility, like it's, it's, it's not serious at all. So I'm actually really not worried uh, about cryptocurrency. Um, not at all. Uh, but I am worried about cash. Uh, and having too much cash or uh, seeing the stock markets collapse and, and getting margin calls. Those are my worries. Way too much bullishness still, uh, and that is out of touch uh, with the fundamentals in cryptocurrency world. And people continue to totally ignore my work that clearly shows that it is very likely that the top will be 2.5 trillion, 2 trillion actually. Huh? 2 trillion will be the top of cryptocurrency in two to three years, three years, by 2023, that's three years from here, huh? the top will be two trillion, and um, because that's how it's been, the pattern of the past, and the patterns of the past don't break, uh, especially not if fundamentals weaken, huh? so, and yeah, I, I, I speak positively about Bitcoin Cash and Ethereum, but uh, these projects also are valued in many billions and um, have serious adoption problems. Uh, also, Ethereum, like, yeah, Ethereum, a cool, cool project. But have you ever run any software from Ethereum that has been of any utility to you other than leveraging your Ethereum uh, and borrowing against it and buying some more Ethereum? Like, you know, DeFi is supposed to be decentralized finance. You can actually do valuable financial transactions that you can't do in the traditional world, banking world, but you can do it on Ethereum, some other coin. How many valuable financial, unique uh, transactions have you done with DeFi? Huh? Um, like, you know, I have to keep it real a bit here too. Huh? It's all promises huh? and uh, lots of scams and returns that are extreme. Uh, uh, I just shared the, the returns of DeFi even after this correction. Uh, it's only 60% uh, the correction. Uh, if you make thousands of percents of returns in a couple of months, it will likely correct 90%, not 60%. Eh? So, and that's even if you're in a bull market. So no, uh, I don't share your opinion, Anon VP. 
that uh, you should be out of stocks and bonds and in, in, in crypto. No, I actually think opportunities always shift and it's very difficult because you have to think indeed independently and from, um, how do you call that? From first principles, as they say. I, you shouldn't be following the crowd. You should be ahead of the pack and you do that by looking at the fundamentals. And I see the biggest opportunity not even in being long crypto or being long stocks, but in being short gold and being short bonds because these are clear, I, to me, so many indicators that they are bubbles, like very, very big bubbles and, and, and very likely to go down. Huh? Um, yeah. Hi, Matt Cow. How much have you made since you started in crypto? 40% per year. And that's since I, since I started uh, investing and tracking my return since 2008. Before the financial crisis, it's 40%. And that's after inflation of 5%. But actually, the first years from 2008 till 2012, my returns were only 5% per year. Before inflation, to that zero percent after inflation, so I was, I was failing as an investor, and it really, I was very aware of that, and really learned and learned and learned and tried to improve my investment strategies, and and really learned the hard way that you really have to take risks, and that there are many false promises in, in the investment world. For example, the permanent portfolio I was promoting at the time that claims to have high returns while taking no risks, I discovered this bullshit, huh? and like all these people that I followed was just full of it. And if you, they, if you become critical of the concepts and point it out with numbers that, for example, yes, the permanent portfolio takes very little risks because it's diversified over gold. It's, it's also long on bonds. It's long on stocks and it has cash. But the returns are not big. Eh? They say like, oh, it has nine, on average 9% returns. But actually, that was since going back many decades. And if you look at the returns decade over decade, the returns were going down and the last decade was only 6%. And then you count for real inflation, which is 5% and some transaction expenses and you made zero. Huh? So yeah, you take no risk, you make zero. That was the truth about the permanent portfolio, which motivated me to change and to start taking risks, calculated risks, huh? where the risk reward is favor in, in, in your advantage. That is investing. Huh? And 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 um, and that's um, usually to be found in un in sectors that are out of uh, uh, out of um, that are not popular. That have had very bad times uh, before. Very few investors interested in. And I still see that with tankers today. I see that with shorting gold. Uh, like who's shorting gold? Nobody. Who's investing in tankers? Very few people. Huh? Um, Shorting bonds mm, used to be popular trade, but most people are out of that too because they think uh, rates will continue to be low. They, they believe that the Fed will succeed and continue to be, keep interest rates very low. They think the economy will crash if interest rates go up. They don't look at past cycles. Like interest rates have gone up also since uh, in the 30s. They were also 0% or 1%. And then they went up in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and in the 70s. 40 years in a row, interest rates went up from 1% to 12 or 13 percent and did the economy uh, got the economy destroyed no not at all it was a, a very good time in the 40s after the war you had the 50s and the golden 60s and all that time interest rates went up and yes there was also the fed and all the central banks printing money out of thin air uh, 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 and 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 buying government bonds keeping interest rates artificially low and still interest rates continue to go up huh? so that's that's the uh, the pattern of the past that will likely return but very few people believe that so shorting bonds is also uh, a trade with very little competition uh, you can see that also in the interest rates you only pay half a percent interest to borrow these uh, TLT um, ETF fund shares and sell them short, or to borrow the GLD ETF and sell it short is only half a percent, very cheap, because nobody's doing it, eh? or very few people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Swordfish. As with the government printing so much money, do you think there will be a big increase in inflation? I go over this a lot. 
So, but the short answer is no. I think most people are absolutely wrong about current infl inflation. It's 5% per year and it's not less. And last year it was 5%, a year before it was 5%. That's the amount of that prices go up of, as, uh, of, of, of if you take an average of all consumer goods, utility bills, uh, asset prices, land prices, precious metal prices, um, energies, commodities, agricultural commodities, um, also art, uh, um, collectibles. You, you you look at all these prices, which I've done in the past, it's on YouTube, uh, uh, and um, yeah, it goes up by about 5% per year. And why? Because that's also actually the average inflation rate of the US dollar. They actually print about 8% more per year on average. And sometimes that's a year like this year when there's a crisis, then they take full advantage. They print 50% more or 100% more. They double the amount of money in circulation. But then the years after, they reduce it by 5% per year or so for five years in a row. That actually just happened uh, before this crisis. And on average, you have about 8% inflation, uh, amount of dollars that they print more. And then you can deduct 2% of economic growth uh, because every year there are about 2% more products, services, precious metals, uh, land. Uh, land expands the amount of land, agriculture land, um, uh, commercial land, land, uh, real estate land. It all expands huh? um, uh, by about 2% per year. So if the supply of money increases with 2%, but the goods and services also increase with 2%, you have zero inflation. But that's not the case. It goes up at 8%, but the economy with 2%, so you have about 6% inflation. And then let's give them the benefit of the doubt and let's pull it down to 5%. And that's the real inflation rate. And that will continue to be the case. Because what happens during crisis, and that's why they also print a lot during crisis, that it's a perfect time to print because normally during crisis, prices will go down of assets in the stock market, of, of land, of, of, of houses, uh, of collectibles. Normally during crisis, it all crashes a lot in price. Um, and, and, and But that doesn't happen when you print lots of money and you start buying these assets and you give people money and you print print money and you give people money and then people of course then assets don't go down so much and 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 that's what happens huh? and so you normally a crisis is is great for the saver because the saver can then buy things a lot cheaper but because then they print lots of money well prices don't collapse so much and so yeah it's for the saver that's not good huh? um but uh yeah for the ones that print the money and get the money that's that's all very good huh? So, so that's what happens during crisis, but that's why you don't see suddenly when they print during crisis 50 or 100% more, you don't see prices explode by 50 or 100% that year. No, because prices are actually collapsing, but you do see them collapsing by 50% less than they would normally do. Huh? Uh, something like that. <laughs> yeah, let me just look at the comments here. So to answer your question, how much did I make since I invest in crypto? Well, more than 40% because my first five years of my track record was was back basically 0%. And uh, my average is still 40, So I, but I don't know how much that is. Maybe it's 50 or 60, I don't know. But it was very good. I also counted that if I would not have, like if I would just have invested in Bitcoin in 2012 and I was with 10% of my portfolio and I would never have sold it, what would be my returns today? They would actually be lower than my actual returns. So I was able to out, out, out to, to, because Bitcoin I bought at $10 in 2012 and now it's, Ten thousand dollars, let's say, so it's times hundred. Huh? But I only invested with 10 ten percent of my portfolio. But if you hundredfold ten percent of your portfolio, then you have uh, how much? Uh, hundredfold ten percent. So tenfold is doubling. Wait, no, it's thousand folding. It went from ten dollars to ten thousand dollars. But so Bitcoin thousand folded in that time. But if I invest only 10%, so 
I would have hundredfolded my portfolio uh, if I would just have held the Bitcoin. Uh, but I did better than that. I did better than that. I more than hundredfolded my portfolio. That's what you get if you have 40% uh, compound annual growth rate uh, over uh, over uh, since 2008. That's about 12 years or so. Yeah, you have more than a hundred folding, but it's only a little bit more. But still, um, I outperformed even that. Um, and I was not investing in Bitcoin since Bitcoin was three thousand dollars uh, early two thousand uh, seventeen. No, it was thousand dollars. And I said, "Fuck Bitcoin, I'm out." So I didn't invest in Bitcoin since it was thousand dollars. But uh, I did uh, invest in many other coins, uh, and and thanks to that, I've outperformed even Bitcoin. And that's today when and of course i also like invest in other markets i made lots with tesla last year um uh, and have time try to time market get try to get out at top get in at bottoms um with uh some success but not all fully successful i made big mistakes also but still on average my returns are, are very good even compared to bitcoin and bitcoin today is in a bubble in the cryptocurrency world it has 50 percent market share still way too much and very likely to go down a lot in market share compared to the currencies that i am invested the bitcoin cash ethereum likely will go up a lot in market share versus bitcoin over the next few years and that would be even the case if, if bitcoin bc had good fundamentals but it doesn't. So I'm very confident that my analysis uh, is, uh, and my returns are very good, but that my analysis is also based in the reality. And I share that often about my returns because I listen a lot myself to financial podcasts and, and YouTube videos and and I like to listen to people that have opinions on the market. But it happens so much that I that I find someone interesting and then I, 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 I dig into their track record and it's just disappointing. Eh? Like they make maybe 5 or 10% per year often or they even like don't even have that. And that's so disappointing and that really discredits for me what they have to say. Like it's very easy to to have a interesting opinion on the market, on where it will go. Uh, and many people are good at talking and at looking good and, 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 and being interesting. But all this is no value if they are not able to invest themselves well. Huh? Uh, like, it really comes down to that. And I, it's been very valuable for me to discredit opinions based on that or give it credit. Huh? also uh, the other way around if they do have a good track record yes it is very important to take their words much more seriously um uh, and and what you will see is that many of the people that you enjoy following but they don't say anything about their track record maybe they're on a fund or not or maybe you have a newsletter or um and 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 of they have a telegram group or but where are the returns? What are their returns? Compound annual growth rate per year since when? And because that's very important to know. And you don't get that information. It's very hard to find for most people. And that's for good reason, I think. That is hard to find. It's because they don't stand out on that uh, level, usually. Mm, yeah, people that say, oh, no, no, the next top of cryptocurrency will not be 2 trillion, it will be 10 trillion. Yeah, but like, do you also have actual arguments? Because my arguments are very strong. Look at my previous video of crypto. I made several about it, why the crypto top will likely be only 2 trillion. And I use the logarithmic regression um, that has helped me a lot in correcting the top for 2017. Yeah, like I was wrong about the top in early 2017. I said, oh, around 3,000 Bitcoin, that will be the top. Um, uh, uh, but then, and I got out uh, uh, with a good piece, but then I discovered the logarithmic regression. I knew about it, but I, I, dis I started to take it much more seriously because I really wanted to not be wrong about this because I know crypto can go a lot higher than expected. So, uh, and I started studying that and, and it, I, it, it became suddenly very clear, like, okay, currently overvaluation is only 100% compared to the logarithmic regression. That's way too low. Like it will likely go to 700%, 800%. Uh, 
And and so that's what the top will be. And so I corrected myself and said, I'm wrong. The top will likely be a lot higher. Um, and I don't know what I predicted, 800 million or 1 trillion or something like that. And it was correct. A half a year later or eight months later, that was the top. And I used the logarithmic regression for that. And after that, at the top, I also predicted a very, very bad year, a very likely serious correction for 2018. And after three months, it had been correcting a lot. I said, and this is just a start. It will take a, likely a, a few more years even. Huh? Uh, and uh, that all did happen. Uh, like I've predicted many things correctly thanks to using the logarithmic regression. And, 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 and not putting my wishful thinking on that chart, but looking at the actual patterns uh, of the past uh, and, and extrapolating them. Um, and I used exactly the same to predict the next top. I think it's really found it well. I think it's very well uh, argued. And this has direct impact on what kind of valuation you ex ex expect this year and next year. Because bubbles go exponential. Eh? The biggest gains are at the end. Eh? And so, yes, we're in early bull market, but it's still a slow, a slow rise up. Eh? Uh, because it will only be by 2022 that it starts to really once the all-time high is breached, then it will start to go very fast, but we're not close yet. MM Crypto, so nice to see you, man. Um, do you think uh, Bitcoin is a good investment long-term? No, I don't, because the fundamentals are not good. It's too risky. It's risky to invest in something that is popular now, but that does not have the adoption to back it up. Because the, the adoption you're having in Bitcoin is only investor adoption. That's not adoption. Investor adoption, you have that with a Ponzi too. Huh? Like, yes, you have many new people coming and bidding up the price and wanting to have a piece of that money-making machine. But th those are not uh, people that use Bitcoin as a currency. They are just investors. They are part. Yeah, you have them in the Ponzi's also. They, you can't count that as 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 as, as user adoption, huh? um, because they are only interested in the price. And when the price goes down, they will also sell. They are not interested to use that as a as a currency. Huh? Uh, and so they don't have, bring add any utility to it. They don't get any utility of it other than price appreciation. And so, um, yeah, I really don't think that. I, I already think that since 2017, uh, $1,000, once it became clear for me that the management of Bitcoin would not increase the amount of transactions uh, for me, that was over because it's way too risky to invest in something that's not scaling up. You would never invest in a company where the management says, you know, uh, the amount of beer that we've been selling here, actually, we're going to limit, put a limit on that here. Eh? No, we're, gonna, we're not going to go above this amount of beer that we're selling. Like, what? Of course, like, that's crazy. Um, uh That's just crazy. Like, you, you, you don't remain invested when management starts to say crazy things and certainly not when they start to do crazy things like no and yes it's it's, it's still going up it's still but that's actually like the right the right time to get out is when it's still selling eh? when when the investors haven't seen it yet eh? like uh, yeah it's still a, a great time to sell it and get much higher quality cryptocurrencies in exchange for it at a great price eh? Um, yeah, we differ strongly on the, on that, uh, uh, but uh, but I think it's super important. So, um, yeah, Wolf, I'm not gonna do a portfolio review. I just did that. Watch my previous Master Investor show. I also have portfolios that are. Uh, invested in big in real estate, you should really listen to that. Um, yes, the euro has about the same inflation rate as US dollar, and all these fiat currencies have about the same inflation rate because they copy each other, and they don't want to, I, with the exception maybe of China. But most crypto, most uh, fiat currencies, they want to basically be about the same, and actually they want to 
have a little bit higher inflation as the U.S. dollar uh, because that, 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 that then they, they, they have a little advantage. The politicians don't care about the purchasing power of the, of, of, of the fiat currency. They care about filling their pockets and making uh, the economical uh, statistics uh, look, look good. And so if you have a little bit higher inflation, you get a little bit more money, but also experts will appreciate versus the United States. So um, it's about the same, yes. Let's see. Forty percent return um, over ten years compound is twenty eight x, uh, not thousand x. Yeah, but since two thousand eight is that's the first year. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. We're at 12 and a half years, uh, uh, that my uh, track record is 12 and a half years. Um, and also it's actually 45%, uh, but I do deduct 5%. So you have to count 45% over 12 and a half years. Uh. Uh, let me do it myself. Compound calculator. Compound interest calculator. So, years to grow 12.5, 45% per year. Yeah, that's from 100, you would go to 10,000, so that's 100x. But you're right, it's not more than 100x. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, the way I count that is, is, is my start capital in 2008 and then my current value of my portfolio. And that's how I get uh, the, comp the compound annual growth rate. Um, yeah, I think it's about correct. Um, let me look at the other comments. So maybe I have a mistake in my compound annual growth rate. I will look it over. Yeah, Lubomir, uh, the, the top of the next overvaluation will not be 800% because that was the previous one. It will be lower. It will only go to 400, maybe 500% overvaluation, huh? not 800 So, so climate tech sex can't believe you're so uh, clueless about the true potential of Bitcoin. Uh, he also says you're investing in oil tankers and inflated stock market. The PE ratios are at an all-time high. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, I don't know. I haven't studied the PE ratios. I can't uh, comment on that. But PE ratios is earnings, eh? price earnings ratio and earnings are profits and companies do become wiser over time that it's not good to have earnings because the government tucks the shit out of it. So it's better to have no earnings as a company. Uh, and so before year end, uh, you make sure that all money you made has been reinvested in expansion so that you have no profits whatsoever. I mean, this is a strategy that was uh, applied by um, Amazon very successfully and nobody understood it. Say, hey, PE, PE is, is like they don't make any money. And it turned out to be the best investment over the past uh, 10, 20 years. And, and many, many more and more companies start to do that. I don't look at PE ratios that much, actually. I look much more at revenue, revenue growth. Um, 
en, uh, en uh, long term returns ja um, yeah. dat is very important eh? like the long term returns the past 10 years the, uh, the returns of the stock market are only 8% People say it's a bubble, but the average return is 8%. And over the last 100 years, it was also 8%. Look, so the stock market has not outperformed average returns the past 100 years. And you see that in previous bubbles, average returns were not 8%. It was 20% per year, uh, much higher. That's over the past 10 years, 20% per year after inflation. Those are um, uh, 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 high returns. Uh, we're, not, we're, not, we're not even close to that. So that's what I look at. Uh, Climate tech. I think you're new to my channel. Huh? Um, he says, did you think that the internet back in the day, um, is, uh, people would say about the internet, the, uh, some guy, or oh, the internet's effect on the world economy would be not greater than fax machines. Huh? And I was very wrong, of course. The, the internet has, has changed the world a lot more than fax machines. Um, and, 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 and many people have underestimated the internet, even Bill Gates himself uh, underestimated the internet uh, greatly. But um, I've been a, uh, uh, like, I've, 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 I've understood the, 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 the potential of cryptocurrency since um, I had the aha moment in 2012. Now I get it. I was actually already busy a lot with investing, but also with money. I was a gold investor. I was already busy a lot with inflation and how destructive it is um, and I was challenging struggling myself to make returns in the market uh, because of course classical investment mistakes but also because yeah just understanding concept uh, wrong huh? uh, and um, yeah with Bitcoin I realized like oh my god this really can change the world uh, before I invested in it but I thought that it was very likely going to fail because governments would not allow competition to fiat currencies. And so I thought I, I thought it was very risky from a legal perspective, but it would pump a lot, even if it would be outlawed. That's, that, I understood that. And and I invest only 10%, and it was way too little. I also didn't understand the Kelly criterion back then. If I would have applied the Kelly criterion and filled in the upwards potential versus downwards potential, that, that's zero, of course. But then still, like, what's the chance that it goes to zero versus first doing a 10x or 100x, like if I would just have filled in the numbers, Kelly Criterion would have recommended to invest a lot more than 10%, but I didn't do that. So um, um, I've learned a lot in the meantime, uh, but to say about my work that I don't understand the potential of cryptocurrency is uh, clearly you're not informed um, about my work. I understand it very well, and that's why I'm such a strong... Uh, um, so 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 unhappy with uh, what's happened with the leader Bitcoin and how it has been sabotaged. And of course, I mean that was also likely to happen. Uh, the governments have indeed infiltrated Bitcoin. Huh? Um, either the governments or the bank. Like people think it's the banks. Say, hey, AXA and all these guys have invested in Blockstream. They are ruling Blockstream, uh, and um, and Blockstream has succeeded in capturing Bitcoin. Uh, and and is uh, and are the ones that have put a transaction limit on it, and have tried since then to build second layers, but uh, they are not really trying. It's a total failure. So they're just in the business of sabotaging Bitcoin, and of course that's in the interest of traditional banks, but it's also in the interest of government. So I think that's what's happened there. Same with the Tether story. Yeah, like like how is it possible that a company can just issue Tether out of thin air so clearly? They have actually been attacked by some government agencies, but they seem to be like not doing much about it. Huh? Why? Well, probably because they are in on it. Huh? Like it's always fun if you can print money out of a book. That's the government, their core business, huh? stealing and, 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 and fooling people. And, uh, and, um, and, and they, are, they are the best at it. And um, of course, they want a piece of the cryptocurrency industry also. And that's how they do it. And they do it well. Huh? So, yeah, that's what's happening in crypto also. Huh? So Bitcoin is pumping now, but it's very correlated to the amount of Tether that's being printed. It goes up exponentially. And so they just like 
issue a titer out of thin air and just buy tons of Bitcoin with it. And only Bitcoin. Huh? Uh, hi, Dex, for sure. Nice to see you, man. Euro Europe has been locking down. Yeah, I, I thought that, that that wouldn't happen. They, they wouldn't do a second lockdown, but they, they are. So I think it's pol politically motivated. Uh, like They probably are on the side of the Democrats in the U.S. more than on the Republicans. So the Democrats are really like liking this COVID uh, thing very much and have really been uh, all the states in the U.S. that have been... Um, dominated by Democrats and ruled by Democrats have seen strong lockdowns and strong uh, uh, um, shutdown of economy uh, policies. And, um, and that's their strategy to really create a crisis. Uh, and, and, and that way, um, and that way um, uh, get the votes huh? uh, by yeah, the same as why, how Bush uh, did a false flag attack of, of uh, the terrorists in 9-11 and that, that saved his presidency because before he was like yeah this this uh, uh, trust fund baby of his father and uh, a loser that was laughed at and um, that only got into the presidential seat thanks to his father and his connections but um, after that he was the president uh, and he was the guy starting wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and uh, the, the tough guy the tough Texican and um and popular with the people of saving them from the terrorists. It's a bit the same here, but then for uh, saving them, saving the people from the virus huh? and uh, creating false flag attacks. It, it truly is false flag attacks. Like these, these, these Corona tests are total jokes. It's totally, um, it's, it's just falsified information. And, uh, and they use that then to say that, oh, it's bad. And now we're going to shut down. Uh, the economy and um, businesses and print money and give money to this and that um, and yeah of course as a, uh, yeah that's what's happening and 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 so I think you know it's a we are a very hierarchical society and most of the U European countries are following the leader the United States and listening to whatever the United States wants and are also trying to get the right people in in this in in, in the presidential seat in the United States because it all has a big impact on their countries too. If the United States starts to go to war, decides to go to war, they have to follow with their own people and also go into war. Eh? If the United States uh, decides to to put a a, 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 a quarantine or a, a, a um, economic quarantine on certain country, they have to follow suit or or they lose their 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 benefits uh, from the United States eh? and, or their uh, good standing. Eh? And so. That's that's I think what motivates most uh, European leaders to uh, today, a month before election or weeks before the election, to again uh, uh, strike hard uh, with this COVID bullshit uh, in the hope that it will uh, favor the Democrats in the election. Now. Um, yeah, so Tesla, I lost a lot of my goodwill for that company for Elon Musk. Looking at what he's doing, um, yeah, I mean, I think it was seriously undervalued uh, a year ago when 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 shares had been flat for five years. Uh, around three hundred dollars and even dipped below two hundred dollars, while revenues had tenfolded. Yeah, great investment. But since then, it has gone up from two hundred dollars to well, it went to about thousand five hundred dollars. And then the stock split was it four for one or five for one? Five for one, I think. And so you have to fivefold the current of uh, shares or fourfold. So if it's now four hundred dollars, it's actually thousand six hundred dollars or two two thousand dollars. Eh? Uh, pre-split but of course like these are dirty tactics eh, that uh, Elon Musk has also applied like you know people are stupid huh? uh, most people are really really stupid huh? uh, and, and that's true for investors too and retail investors you see that in crypto also and they want to buy a coin that's cheaper than one dollar because they think that's cheap they don't even look at the market cap 
Uh, and it's, it's the same in the stock market. And so when your share goes up from, let's say, $200 to $2,000, well, as a CEO, as a screwed CEO, what do you do? You do a stock split because then suddenly the, the shares are cheaper. And then it's not $2,000, it's only $500, $500. And so it looks cheaper than before, and so people buy it more. So that's what also Elon Musk did. But uh, yeah, I have many critiques also on Elon Musk. I shared the video, why you should sell Tesla. Um, it was around maybe $1,500 or so, and today it's $2,000. It's basically going sideways and slowly up, but I think it will go sideways for uh, the next few years. But yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, of course he's a hero, Elon Musk, and thanks to him that we have electrical vehicles. Uh, like he does a lot of things much better than many, like most others. But at the same time, he's also like filling his pockets very good eh? on this Tesla story. Like he's the most expensive CEO in history. Eh? The guy is just issuing shares to himself. Eh? Um, uh, uh, yeah, the board approves of it. But basically, he, he just sets the terms. Eh? He's very, um, like most CEOs, very controlling. Eh? Like you don't see us. Who's the second big guy in, in, in Tesla? Or the third big guy. There's no one there huh? uh, because he keeps absolute full control and he doesn't allow anyone else to basically get some air or get some uh, recognition or get some like a praise uh, within Tesla. No, no, it all needs to go to him. And the same with the money. Huh? Like, who, who else gets such generous bonuses, a billion dollar uh, stock options huh? uh, in the company other than him? Uh, and in talking about $10 billion stock, $20 billion stock options, like just crazy and never seen before. Huh? Um, and all these Tesla fanboys just say, yeah, but he earned it. Uh, yeah, well, you know, then Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, uh, 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 Steve Jobs, they should have all done that, right? Like, I don't think that's true. I think that like in capital, in our capitalist structure, the way it works with shareholdership is already really allowing people to become very rich by being founders and having a big stake in a company and holding on to it, not selling it off and building great value for the company. You already become the biggest uh, and richest person in the world, if you want. Huh? Uh, so why does he have to like add to that huh? and also like want big, uh, 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 big stock option bonuses for him? I think it's just greed. And, and, and I don't think it's good for shareholders at all. Um, and, uh, and, um, and uh, yeah, that's just one of the critiques I have. I have many more. Uh, and, and I think it's time to be critical of a company like that because it's seriously overvalued. Huh? Uh, it's hyped. It's, that's not where the opportunity lays today and not even in tech stocks in general. I'm, I'm really thinking strongly of just kicking out the Zillow that I bought, bought in ArcG because tech in general is hyped. It has gone up a lot. Whereas value stocks, not. Eh? It's really depressed, just like the tankers and even st these corona stocks, airlines have been buying. Like That's where the opportunity lays in value stocks, not in tech stocks and not in growth stocks. I believe that. Um, uh, again, you have to go where uh, the retail uh, and the masses are not. And, and, and it's not only to make money, it's also to protect your money. Eh? Because if you do get a collapse, what will collapse the most? Is it the growth stocks or the value stocks? Likely, it's actually the growth stocks because they've gone up the most. Huh? Um, and that's why also, for example, when you ask me, do you invest? would you invest in Bitcoin Core, Bitcoin BTC? No, it's not only about, yes, you will make likely a lot less money when there's a bubble. Like likely Bitcoin Core will only go up to 40K in the, in the, in the, over the next 20, 30, uh, three years. I think it's very likely Bitcoin will only pick out, pick out at 40K. That's a Forex from here. Um, so we will make likely much less money than other cryptocurrencies. But it's also in case of like, let's say worst case scenario, we do get a strong collapse. Usually like the smallest coins go down the most, but like there is just a risk for Bitcoin core to really get like a tipping point where the crucial people that support the coin stop supporting it and start to speak out against the leadership of Bitcoin Core. Huh? Um, and then you can get a tipping point, uh, uh, 
I don't know, like I don't know all these people, but some people have been supporting Bitcoin Core strongly. Like you just see them dropping off person by person and institution by institution. You can say, hey, it's it's gaining it's gaining more and more traction. No, no, those are new players that have no clue about cryptocurrency, like this micro strategy guy uh, pouring in a lot of his money in Bitcoin Core and have no clue about what cryptocurrency is, that it is actually something that needs to innovate that needs to compete with other cryptocurrencies, like they don't understand that. Um, but, uh, and that needs to be like adopted as a currency, cryptocurrency, huh? like the, the, the newcomers. Yeah, but what about the old people? Huh? Like Trace Meyer, for example, huh? he chose in the whole um, uh, big block debate, instead of like, because he was a, a voluntarist and a, and a capitalist and a, and, uh, and, and, and and really had the right foundation, just like Eric for his. Huh? Um, uh, but then when you have like, when push comes to shove, they choose to support or not speak out against the mismanagement of Bitcoin Core and continue to support Bitcoin Core and ignore Bitcoin Cash that actually did scale and fork off and did scale. Um, uh, but what happens with these people later? They just disappear. Huh? Or this other guy, the one from Belgium, What's his name again? The Meester. Uh, the Meester. Tuur de Meester. Uh, another guy. Uh, very popular with the Bitcoin Maxis. Uh, but uh, these guys just all fiddle out. Suddenly they're gone. Uh. Tuur de Meester, I think he made his Twitter uh, private. Trace Meyer got boosted from the community because he started his own coin. And before he was totally supporting the, the, uh, the Maxi, uh, uh, the Maxi uh, uh, narrative and the small scale blocks even. Uh, 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 but then suddenly, like he starts his own coin, booted out, gone. Huh? Um, uh, and, and, and I think this, this, this is continuing to happen. That's what happens with a poorly managed organization. More and more people drop off. Uh, that used to be the face of it. Huh? And, um, and, and, and institutions too huh, that embrace it and build around it, huh? they drop off. And this can certainly happen uh, in Bitcoin Core. Uh, and then and you can get a tipping point where some important people basically say screw it and they switch to another coin, Ethereum or Bitcoin Cash or something else. And and that may be really that may be that may really shift the landscape a lot. That's the risk, the downward risk here. Eh? I'm talking about probabilities. I think it is likely that it will go up to 40k. Yes. Huh? Uh, but there is a small chance it goes up a lot more, and there is a small chance it goes down a lot more or goes up a lot less. Huh? Uh, let me look at uh, more comments. Thanks for joining, guys. 58 people. But Serkis says, tell that to the emergency people in the hospitals. The hospitals are empty. Even in, in areas where you have like a, an outbreak, you go to the hospitals, they are empty. Huh? Like, yeah, it's, it's very rare that you actually have uh, a lot of people come into the hospital. You, usually it's just a local panic um, um, or lots of old people that got affected. Uh, but um, no, no, no. These are absolute lies. Huh? Like a, a pandemic, an epidemic should have hospitals full of people suffering from the virus. That's not the case. <laughs> it's empty, actually. I was in the hospitals here in Kenya many times uh, during the peak of the pandemic. Empty. I asked, where are these people? It is in the other section. How many? Many, many. How many? Uh, Ten people. Just a bullshit story that the hostels also love to support, but when you go look with your own eyes, it's not there. Yeah, all these, uh, yeah. Anyway, it's uh, we're lucky that it's fake because it could be real too. Eh? Like it could be real eh? that you have like a real virus that kills 10% of the population. That would be quite another story. Eh? Then I would also not invest. 
as a bull in the markets, um, uh, wiping out 10% of the population. That, that's a real crisis. No, that's not happening at all. So we're lucky in that respect. Huh? It's better to have a fake false flag attack than a, a real attack. Huh? That's why I'm also bullish on the stock market. Huh? You have many indicators that show that the economy is picking up very fast. Um, yeah. So I, I think that yeah, it's hard to predict how low we will go, but I do think it's buying buying opportunity in the stock market. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't think it's. I think it's very unlikely we would make new lows. Very unlikely. But I, I don't think even it's likely that we will test the bottom. But of course it can. Like we went five down five percent, we can go down ten percent, maybe even fifteen percent. But that, that's it. I don't think. I don't think we can go down much. Yeah, Elon Musk's mission to Mars is also bullshit. Huh? Like that's not that's not true. Like he's not honest there. Um, why is he not talking about the moon? Like we have not been on the moon. Huh? Like, it would be nice to go to the moon. Like if I'm a billionaire, I'm happy to pay a billion to go to the moon. But nobody is offering any any trips to the moon. If you're lucky, you can go uh, 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 just out of the um, atmosphere here. And, and see planet Earth uh, from a, a little distance. That's the best you can do. And that's not space. It's just flying high. If you have a billion dollars, you can pay for that and do that. But to go to the moon, uh, no, that's not possible. Uh, and that would be nice. Uh, like, that's the first step. Why is he not uh, talking about that? He knows that was all fake. Those uh, moon landings in the 60s and 70s, he knows. But he doesn't say anything about it. Okay, he doesn't have to say anything about it, of course, because that, that's, of course, very... Like, that will create a lot of opposition towards him. But why is he keeping this dream in front of people to go to Mars when we can't even go to the moon? Like, it's totally unrealistic. It's not going to happen. Huh? So, I don't understand that. So I agree with you, Juicy, about that. Yeah. I'm looking at the comments. So tanker stocks, I really think it's a great time to go in, you know. Like, okay, I have 20% exposure. I'm conflicted whether I should invest more in it. I'm thinking about it, but of course, it's not all gold. There are also some problems there. Eh? Um, but I just shared on Twitter um, a tweet from um, a guy I think does very good analysis uh, in, in, in the tankers. And uh, he recommended three stocks. Yeah, great buys. Um, so check that out. Uh, I, I think that, yeah, this is a great investment still. I lost half of my investment. But uh, it's even a better investment now. And if you don't have any exposure yet, it's a great time to get in now. Like 25% of book value, likely revenues will continue. Uh, okay, you can have a year, two years of lower shipping rates, but it won't go broke, the companies. And and of course, could, could, uh, because I think the economy will, will pick up quickly. Uh, and, uh, and, and airlines, for example, will be at 100% capacity again. 
in half a year uh, and uh, cruise ships in one year, maybe two max. So, but but of course, economies always grow, huh? and and so uh, the whole uh, oil play, uh, I think, uh, makes a lot of sense. The only the only thing that is, of course, risky is that it's not the future, and so you, you may like you really need other people's to bid up the value of your stock be, to be able to profit. And so, yeah, yeah and, and, and that's, of course, like it's a toss up, I would say. Uh, will the stock market, will these retail investors or will institutions come and join and bid up the stock, your, your tankers or not? Huh? Um, because it's not the future, that's a problem. Huh? Like, yes, it will likely be the last. I mean, like oil demand will go down, but not the next 10 years. It will continue to go up, but after that, it will start to go down. Um, and so, yeah, peak of the peak in oil consumption will likely be in 10 years or so. So if there's a bubble in uh, oil tankers, it will be the last bubble. Huh? And, and so, yeah, it's risky to play the last bubble because it may not happen also. Uh, because, yeah, they may they will very likely make a lot of money, these tankers. But that doesn't mean the value of the stock goes up. Huh? For that, you need other investors to bid up the valuations. And that's where, like, I think I have underestimated the risk. I thought, like, if they will likely make lots of money, so likely the value of the stocks will go up. But, of course, that's not the not so likely if it's the last bubble, then it may also not happen. But um, yeah, I mean, I mean, you see already today that these companies, they really start to buy their own shares and they start to just sell off ships. And what do they do, do, they do with the money? Are they just distribute that as dividend or they uh, buy back stock? Like in the end, if it's, the value of your ships is, is four times higher than the value of your company. What do you do? And, and your earnings, and I'm talking not about revenues, I'm talking about earnings, profits, or, I don't know, half of the value of your company in a year. Yeah, what do you do? Do you buy more ships? Or do you buy back stock? Or do you pay dividends? Yeah, you you don't buy more ships uh, because what's the point? Uh, if the value of your stock is so low, um, you buy back stock. Huh? So 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 uh, uh, so so you don't even need retail investors to pump the value. Like after a while, yeah, like it's even the companies themselves just buying back stock, pumping up the value. Uh, that's one of those plays. That was shared by this guy on Twitter. Uh, ASC Ardmore Shipping. The valuation of the company is 100 million, and they just approved a buyback of 30 million. What will that do to the stock? Likely it will go up. Huh? You don't need retail investors even. It's just a company buying back 30 million of stock, and the total value is 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 100 million. Yeah, will likely pump the price. Huh? So th those are the kind of like things happening in this industry. Um, and also very interesting, what I like to see is like the bulls are bailing out. Huh? Big bulls, instead of buying more, they sell all their stock. Yeah. So so I think great opportunity now in tankers. No, 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 Ludo, Lubomir. Um, the 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 the, the Trollolo chart shows indeed thousand three hundred percent overvaluation. The first cycle, uh, the second cycle thousand percent, and the third cycle was only eight hundred percent overvaluation in twenty seventeen. So the next cycle will likely be only five hundred percent overvaluation. 
Yeah. Yeah, so thanks so much for the comments, guys. I went through all of them. So yeah, I think it's important to 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 continue my strategy of getting rid of my cash, but of course uh, with my leverage, I really have to study that more. And of course, worst case, the market corrects considerably more. I will get margin calls, and um, I will have to sell off some of my short on gold. Um, uh, but my plan is to really work on 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 avoiding that because I think it's very important when you take in a great position to hold it. Huh? And and so that my short on gold, I think was was very good and I should hold it for the next 10 years at least eh? and use that capital over the next 10 years uh, in other markets. Um, uh, and in order to hold it, I might have to borrow against my crypto to bring more capital to my brokerage account to able to not get margin calls. But I think that's the right strategy. Eh? And, 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 and I also really would like if I get an opportunity, if the market's indeed correct, correct then... Uh, bonds will likely, TLT will likely go up in value again from the current 157 to a peak maybe again, uh, a double top of 172. And I, my, my goal is then to also short bonds for 30% of my portfolio. And so then I have short gold, short bonds. But, um, but of course, the, I will get serious leverage problems there because if the market's correct at the same time, then actually uh, my stocks, my, the value of my stocks will go down a lot. And gold will likely not correct so much. So now I'm like minus 35% or so short on gold. But if you get a correction, it will become minus 50% eh? because my portfolio becomes a lot smaller. Eh? And so that's a problem. Eh? I will get margin calls. and will, I will have to sell my short on gold and at the same time raise cash for it because selling my short on gold means um, I have to pay to pay back those uh, shares that I have uh, uh, borrowed on GLD and sold in the market, I have to buy it back likely at a lower price. I'll make a small profit, but I have to raise cash, meaning I have to sell stocks uh, that likely went down a lot more uh, to pay back uh, that short on gold. So it's a getting a bit of a tight position, but I think, yeah, the solution here for me is to um, borrow against my crypto, which I've never done. But yeah, I think borrowing against an asset in order to buy more of the same asset is not smart. Huh? But borrowing against an asset to invest in something else that's not correlated and that is um, also a great opportunity is wise. Um, as long as you don't do it too much. Um, but yeah, that's, that's leveraging your capital huh? in a smart way. Uh, important, I think. So yeah, we are uh, one hour, 18 minutes in. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Yeah, Lubomir, you're not looking at my Trollo chart. And some people make their own Trollo charts, but um, yeah, I mean, to, 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 to have it uh, plotted out correctly and all that. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Juicy says that leverage is tricky. You can lose money even if you're right. It's all about timing and very hard to get the timing right. I agree, I agree. I can see that also in my portfolio that I have to be careful. Uh, Trollolo is long gone. Eh? 
Uh, I'm, uh, I have uh, created my own uh, shard now uh, that I update from time to time. It's public shard. You can just find it uh, Google Sheets. Uh, do a search. Uh, and under my videos, I link to it often. Uh, you can uh, check the sheet. You can copy the sheet and uh, change it for yourself and edit the way you like it. But I update that sheet also regularly, every month or so, or when prices are moving. Why no? Do you know what happened to Trollolo? He was a very good market predictor, so he likely made lots of money and said. And then he, he 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 probably didn't want to leave traces, and so he disappeared from his account. Um, yeah. But I think actually was it Trollolo? Yeah, I think that he was really focused on getting in at the right time and during the bear market, and he succeeded in that, and that was a job done and complete. And and I think he left because. His job was done. He, he got in at the right time. And, and that was for him actually at the bottom. He really succeeded in that. Uh, in 2018, in December. Yeah, at 100 billion. He really called the bottom there and he was right. And I didn't see it at the time. It's only later that I realized, damn, that was the bottom. <laughs> Because he was also looking at the MVRV ratio. I wasn't studied that uh, uh, yet. But he was all, and he had published an article on it on Medium. And before the bottom happened, and he said, okay, if the MVRV also goes below one, I very likely that's the bottom. And he was right. Yeah. Well, I also think that, that crypto will decouple more from uh, from stocks like during crisis everything gets correlated and everything crashed together and pumped together but once the crisis is over markets follow their own patterns and stock market is inversely correlated to the commodity market um, and real estate is correlated to stocks uh, and art and and, 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 and collectibles and supercars is correlated also to stocks. Um, but, but crypto, for example, is just a new market. It's not correlated to stocks before. Uh, and okay, some people would say that's not true because the, 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 the bubble uh, that happened in 2017, 2015, 16, and 17 was also at the same time stocks were pumping. And then the peak in the stock market was at the same time as the peak in the crypto market in early 2018. Uh, and then it went sideways stocks and crypto also. Uh, that's true. Uh, but um, and, and, and it's true. But um, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's one cycle, but we had also the cycle before in 2011. I mean, yeah, that's so young. Crypto is so young. Like, I don't think it will continue to be like that. Like the, the, the cycle of the, the stock market is so much longer. Like the cycle I see in the cryptocurrency market, if you look at bottom to top, you can clearly see that, yeah, there is there is there are cycles. Uh, and uh, yeah, in 2011, the top, you had in 2013 a top, you had in 2017 a top, uh, always uh, in, at the end of the year, except in 2011, it was in the, in the middle. Um, and um, you see a clear pattern of longer cycles over time. Uh, and yeah, okay, 2017 was same top current with stock market, but not the one in 2013, I think, not the one in 2011. And 2011, it was just a, a new project. Um, so, so I don't think we will see continued correlation here with the stock market. I think that it's much more likely that, yeah, stocks continue their own part and, 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 and crypto will decouple indeed. And so what does that mean? That means that, yeah, I, I think for stocks, it's likely to go up um, and, and climb on a wall of worry that we clearly have in the stock market still. 
but for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, I think it's another story. I think we're in an early bull market, but um, most of the participants are too bullish and expect way higher valuations that, than that w- what's likely going to happen. And so I foresee actually for most of the crypto market, they will be disappointed with the price performance over the next year. Um, Versus the stock market, where most stock investors will be very happy uh, in one year time with the sto- with the returns they see, but I don't think that will be the case for the crypto market. Most crypto investors will be disappointed with the returns over the next year. That doesn't mean goes down. No, I think we will be higher than we are today in crypto, but with a few corrections uh, and 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 uh, and and not uh, not close to an all time high yet still. Huh? which is 800 billion, um, I don't think uh, we'll be uh, there next year. It's another two years before we break the all-time half to 800 billion. So expectations in crypto are very, very, uh, I think, way too bullish. And expectations in stocks are too bearish. And it's a fundamental difference that I hope uh, will also play out because actually these days I'm more invested in stocks than in crypto. Yeah, but uh, Lubomir, when you look at the Trollo chart, you have to look at overvaluation today, not at the peak of the bubble in 2018 with the price data only at, at, until 2018, then you may be right that overvaluation was 1,200%. But you have to look at it from today's perspective with all the price data since then, which is another two years and a half of price data, and then you it, it will pull down that new price data pulls down. Uh, wait. Eh? No. Um, anyway, if you look at it from today's perspective, it's not uh, that high. Um, but I can I can look it up. Yes. Uh... Yeah, I'm loading a sheet. So, um, I'm looking at 2018. The peak, the 3rd of January was 1000%. I know you're right, 1,200%. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I I was remembering the previous uh, chart, but yeah, I I have done it again. But yeah, okay. Before then, it was also a lot higher. eh? So the peak in in, in the bubble before was, you're right, you're right, you're right. I'm sorry, I'm wrong here. Yeah. Oh, so you may be right then that in the next bubble, it will be 800% and not 500% like I said. So I'm going to I'm going to look into that. Thanks for making me aware. Uh, Rapolas uh, uh, asks good question. Mark, you are rich. Why you take extra risk and stress by using leverage? Um, well, um, I just try to be approach it irrationally. Um, yes, leverage adds extra risk. That's true. But what's the alternative if you want to short gold, for example, and you don't want to use leverage? So what do you do then? You short gold and you take the cash that you get from it and you keep it just on a bank account or on the broker with the broker, or you can put it in a safe investment like a permanent portfolio. That's true. Um, but 
yeah, I mean, it's it's the passion for the craft. Huh? Uh, like even when you become rich, you still want to do a great job in 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 what you do. And um, well, like let's say I don't know, you're making shoes and you become richer from making shoes. You can stop making shoes, but you likely you became rich making shoes because you love making shoes huh? and you love the. The, the art of making shoes and the art of, 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 of production and of marketing. And, and, and so it's your passion. Eh? And so it's not become you, because you become rich that you're going to stop with it because that was not even the goal. Like, yes, it's, of course you want to make good money and, and yeah, you want to become rich, but um, it's also the love for the craft that drives you. And that's the same with me. Uh, like I really love investing and I love to become better at it. And I believe that taking this leverage uh, is a, a calculated and a rational approach um, that does not lower my expected return um, um, of course, but that's not the question. Does it raise your risk? Huh? And it, I think it all depends. It's not because you use leverage that your risk is higher. Um, because you have to look at um, yeah, risk-reward ratio and how diversified are you. Huh? Uh, if, for example, you take 20% leverage on your portfolio and you take a loan of 20% of your portfolio and you invest that in something that's totally uncorrelated to your other investments, has the overall risk of your portfolio gone up or not? Yes, you do take 20% leverage and it means that you can get margin calls now. So you could say, yes, my risk is up. But on the other hand, you have invested in something that's totally uncorrelated to your other investments. So the answer there is no, your risk did not go up. Huh? Yes, on one hand, your risk went up there. But on the other hand, your risk went down there. Huh? And then the question is, okay, my risk didn't go up. Did my expected returns go up? And if the, if, if, if the, if the answer is yes, then you did the right trade. Or... Has the risk reward ratio of my portfolio overall gone up? And if the answer is yes, then you improved your portfolio. Huh? But I do like, 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 like your question is very good because I do, I'm taking like certain risk right now that are not calculated very well and I could get into trouble. So I really need to uh, get that uh, under control because otherwise I could really lose a lot of money. That's correct. So thanks for uh, the great question, Rapolas. And you are also new. Nice to see you. Yeah, Lu Lubomir, I will, I will uh, recalculate and, uh, for the next stop. And thanks for pointing out my mistake. But uh, I have 500%. I can just uh, change that in the investment plan and actually immediately see what the difference would be. But I also have to look at the other numbers, though. You know, it's not the only way that I get to that two trillion, two trillion. There are three ways of calculating that uh, that g gave me that conclusion. Huh? Three ways, huh? not just one. Huh? So it's only one way that you're pointing out where, um, where, um, where you say like that's the wrong calculation. And I will look into it. I'm not going to do it now. Uh, but there are two other ways also. I look at um, returns over time. In every bubble, returns go down. And if you extrapolate those returns, you also get two to three trillion uh, for the next stop. And I also look at um, if you extra if uh, every time when when you reach the bear the bottom of the bear market, at that point, when you extrapolate the trollo trend line logarithmic regression, you end up with a top valuation for the next peak. Actually, it's always above the top valuation of the next peak. And if you use that, you also see that it cannot be higher than uh, three or four trillion there because that's where the trend line stands uh, and it will likely be lower. It won't even touch it. Huh? So that's another way of uh, coming to that conclusion.
Onzio says that he recently dumped his gold for BTC. Well, I, I think dumping gold is a good idea, but buying BTC, we did not. All right. No Dutch, guys. Uh, it's an English show. So, yeah. One minute, one hour thirty. Um, I think we did a great job. Uh, I wish you all a uh, good luck in the markets. Um, and um, yeah. Follow me on Twitter if you don't do so yet. I share a lot there. Um, I ditched Twitter as an investment. Uh, but I love to use the platform. And I also ditched Baidu. Uh, I had invested in, but I sold it back off uh, because, um, yeah, I realized it's just a Chinese uh, internet giant. But, uh, yeah, profiting a lot from the censorship uh, in China, but not in a strong position. Yeah, they tenfolded their revenues, uh, and, 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 and but they haven't gone up in market cap the past 10 years. That's why I invested in it. But of course, um, it has to align with your, yeah, philosophy also. And yeah, I don't support, uh, like I was once in China and I really did not enjoy it because I can't use anything there. I couldn't use Google, couldn't use Twitter, couldn't use Facebook, couldn't use YouTube. Like it's just like living in a, in a, in the desert. And I'm not interested in all these Chinese apps. And, um, I think that China is not really uh, yes, it's doing a great job in certain ways. Uh, it certainly is like leading in trade globally and bringing cheap goods to people. I, I think that's great, investing in many countries. Um, but on the other hand, like they are not opening opening up their economy that much and they are not like they are, yeah. Like a company like Baidu, the problem is that, um, yeah, they, they are uh, getting lots of competition from Chinese apps that have implemented also search uh, and, and so lose, losing their uh, cash cow, the search market, uh, because Baidu is like Google, um, but they're losing their, their their core business, the search market to, to, to competitors, small apps, uh, apps that gain traction, have search built in. Uh, and then they are losing lots of money on the Netflix copycat, of course, always copycats eh, uh, in China. Uh, but they have a Netflix copycat that they are promoting a lot, but they lose lots of money on that. Um, uh, so I don't think they are in that of a great position. Um, there are also some legal problems with these Chinese companies quoting in, in, in the U.S., but not being on good terms with the United States. And then, yeah, you risk being delisted. Uh, so I looked more into it um, and... Uh, and, uh, and all these things uh, make it not worth it for me to continue to invest in this. So, yeah, I got out of it. Huh? Um, I do need my cash. And I do like like to keep my portfolio as small as possible uh, and as focused as possible. So if it's not a great investment uh, and I realize that later I, I sell it off again. At a loss or profit, I don't really look at that. Okay, guys, thanks so much for joining, and I hope you are to see you all again uh, in the future. Have a great uh, Sunday.